Hi, my name's Vulgar Assassin, and I am here to talk to you today about the making of and inspiration behind my new album. <laughs> Giallo is a concept album. It is an album that comes from films that I uh, remember watching growing up. The only reason she babysits is to have a oh, place shit. to I have a place for that. Me and my sister are big horror fans and just fans of the genre in general. Giallo is an album that calls back that, that style of filmmaking that's accompanied by incredible soundtracks and crazy visuals and just like insane amounts of close-up shots and gore and just insane visual, you're just bombarded by color, is a big callback to those films that inspired me, especially films like Suspiria, where you would watch the film and it would be complemented by the soundtrack. The soundtrack of these films basically made the movie. Like you, you can't not have them together to have them not work. Uh, for example, Suspiria is one. The music soundtrack's done by Goblin. Amazing band to this day. They still perform and they do really, really cool stuff. Halloween. Oh, look. Look where? Behind the bush. I don't see anything. The guy who drove by so fast that one you yelled at? You can't so associate, you can't have one element of these films without the music. Hey, creep. A lot of times the beats will signify the intent of the character. Laurie, For dear. example, in Halloween, you have that driving beat that mimics tonight. the driving force of Michael Myers. As he's stalking his, his victims. As he's, you know, committing the murders. As the movie goes, the beat just goes and continues and doesn't stop. in that energy Mommy! you're right there and you get that perspective you get that feeling, you get the heartbeat going you have all of that happening in the film and you get that through the music uh, when i started the vulgar assassin project it was originally intended to be a riff and parody uh to internet music Oh my god. Cheers. My debut album was called Internet Music and it had a lot of different styles that would be able to be used and was used in the internet at the time. It played a lot on on lyrics, on it was dependent on music videos and just sounds that pretty much encapsulated what it was like to be around in the like mid early 2000s when YouTube and music downloading was like starting to like become a thing. So internet music was the album that inspired me to open up the internet world and do music that could be used now in internet videos. The style of Vulgar Assassin was never to take anything too seriously, just to make banging music and have some lyrics that are just fun, which is a big departure from the stuff that I normally do. I'm normally big into dance and pop music, and I take that very seriously. But the Vulgar Assassin project is a chance for me to really like express my creative muscle 
and really explore genres and explore the kind of music that I wouldn't necessarily be able to do comfortably in my other projects. So the Vulgar Assassin stuff really, really hones in deep on what it's like to be in fully immersed in whatever type of project I happen to be working on. It really gives you the opportunity to really just get in there and really rediscover and pull out the best materials that, that you can do for whatever project you're working on. Giallo was a big one. started working on Giallo, um, I had a big background in filmmaking. I was a filmmaker long before I was a musician. See you in hell, motherfucker. of movies um, specifically like that grindhouse era the 70s and 80s even the 60s type of the filmmaking uh, there was just something really like gritty there was a really there's really big fuck you moments in films in that era where they gave the middle finger to the system to the government to the studio system and really touched on subjects that we really don't address that much anymore. You're starting to see it come back now, little by little. You have these this set of films in the 70s that actually did all that. They were making these films that, besides the subject matter, really had a message that they wanted to deliver. The filmmaker always had a message. The best part of it was they managed to collaborate with musicians and artists that felt the same way. Dario Argento, who frequently collaborated with Goblin. John Carpenter, who just did it himself, because he felt like, you know, sometimes the vision, you need to see it through on the other side, or really flex that muscle. With me being a musician and having a love for all of these movies, and then falling out of it and rediscovering it again when Grindhouse came out. No Holds Barred feature length motion pictures for the price of one. <laughs> Only at the Grindhouse. It really reignited my, my passion to re-explore and get into it. My thesis film in film school was inspired by the cinema of the 70s and 80s. And to this day, I have a really big affinity for those kinds of films. Uh, if you ever come over to my place, I have a collection of cinema all the way from hundreds of Criterion. And on, the, on one side and on the other end, you have just trash cinema from every genre. I have stuff that is more like commercial and stuff that's very, very niche and very abstract. And I love all of it and everything in between. When I started working on Giallo, before it became Giallo, I think it first initially started as one single, uh, which became like the opening credits. I 
I thought that it would be great to actually like explore this more. I started falling in love with this style of, of basically felt like I was making a film. So I gave the album a backstory. The album does have a story and it, it's kind of a weird one. Uh, and I think it's, it does also pay uh, an homage to the genre. Giallo tells the story of Bethany Myers. She gets invited to the Academy and to perform for this opus by this director who's really inspired by the song, No, I Won't Help You Find Mascara. I think you're a bitch. Your mom is a bitch. Your dad is a bitch. And your dog is a bitch. It's been reworked and made into this operatic, like, big art piece. Bitch. And just this performance art bonanza. Such a fucking bitch. Which is kind of interesting because the album kind of lives very meta to oh my, my second official album, uh, which is Lying. also another song that's entrenched deep Shut in up. internet culture. There's a lot of callbacks to Kelly, you know, shoes. Oh my God, shoes. Oh my God, shoes. And as they go through rehearsals and as they make you their way towards the count. debut oh of the production, Somebody wants to shut it down. So little by little, people start dying. Accidents start to happen. People start to go missing. And no one can figure out who it is. As the days go on, the killer starts to focus his energy on Bethany. There is something about Bethany Myers that the killer is zoning in on, there's a, that's where the mystery is of Giallo, is focusing in on Bethany. <laughs> to see and figure out who it is, what it is that they're doing, and what the resolution's gonna be. So that's the idea of Giallo and the way that it's structured like a film. It has an opening credits, it has the prologue, it has the title sequence, and then from there it just goes down a list of a whole bunch of songs that would be what you would put in, in the film. Um, it, it has not been made. I have no plans of making it into an actual feature, but if anyone is watching this interview and feels inspired to make it, go for it. Let me know how that goes and absolutely use the music. You have my permission. It's got your typical tropes. It's got a lot of, of catch-alls of the genre. You have the gloved hands, you have the shot of the feet, you have, you know, usually a hat or a trench coat. You have the shadowed figure. You have the crazy close-ups of looking through the peephole. No, you're fooling me. Go away, go away. Hey, I've seen you before. I know you. No, not the gun. I want to see your face again!
those musical cues and all those musical elements I brought into the album and interpret it in a way that would be paying tribute to the works. So I pull a lot of the musical elements for my personal favorites, Fabio Fritzi, a Goblin, and Carpenter. Uh, I love how simplistic John Carpenter's beats can be, or at, at first they seem really simple, but then when you really like listen to it, when you really go into it, all the synthesizers and everything, there is a complex structure to it. There, there's some sort of madness to the systemic pulsing of the beat. And a lot of times the beats will signify the intent of the character. For example, in Halloween, you have that driving beat that mimics the driving force of Michael Myers. In Suspiria, you have these amazing sounds by Goblin that invoke not just instrumentation, but the way that they use vocalists in the music, in the background, make sounds and yell at you, you're put at the center of the music. Uh, they fling accusations, so you'll be listening to the music and you, you'll hear the synthesizers, the guitars, and then out of nowhere, you'll hear someone go, WITCH! catches you off guard. So what's really cool about these soundtracks is not only are they unconventional and innovative and wacky as fuck, but also they're, you're in it. Keep you in a sense of vertigo where you don't know where the song's gonna go. One minute it sounds really peaceful and could almost sound like, you know, and credit music, and then out of nowhere, hmm, it flips on you. Synthesizers, drums, guitars just hit you out of nowhere. That is the essence that I wanted to capture with Giallo. So there's a couple of songs on the album that get like that. One of my favorite ones is, is uh, Knife After Dark. When I was making the album, I realized that this is a, a genre most mainstream audiences are not too familiar with. This is something that's more uh, an acquired taste. Uh, you need a lot of research sometimes going into these when you watch them to really appreciate what they are as an art form. And they're really early versions of slasher films. Uh, but they started initially as almost Scooby-Doo-like whodunits, where you have the mystery, you have the, th the basic structure of a 
woman or man in distress being chased by an unknown figure with things happening around them and you don't know who the uh, assailant is until the end. And in between, anything goes. It's Wild West. And there's so many red herrings thrown in. So many. It's head, it's, eye, it's head turning how many red herrings you can have in a movie. And it's never who you think it is. The fact that they got this style down. And to this day, a lot of films mimic this sort of style. Uh, you got like the, the new Scream film. Uh, you got all these like A24 type of, of horror films where you're now focusing more on figuring out the mystery and also figuring out the physical and mental workings, what the cogs are doing that cause this sort of, of behavior to happen. And that's something that early giallos touch on, but they don't really make a focus. And I feel like that's kind of really important now that you have films of the, the new the new horror the new wave of horror that's coming out is really in tune with uh, social social political issues medical issues and just really getting into the psychosis of people's minds. You have a lot of films like The Babadook. I'm sorry to spoil it, but The Babadook is a film about depression and very specifically the maternal depression how a woman a single mother deals with the society around her after her husband is gone you know, died or you know or passed you have the pressures of what it's like to be a person who's required to function at a specific level in society even though mentally you're collapsing you got films that study this now where this is becoming a big cultural cultural thing and it's really impressive when you look back at the history of these films, at how they went from really, really shallow, uh, upfront, very, just very minimal plot and, you know, driving forces to now, which you have really in-depth personal stories. So that's what's really cool. So making the album, I had to really, really bring out the elements of surprise. After, since there's no movie that the album can associate itself with, I had to be more on the nose about it when making the music. I also need to entice the audience with a song that gets you from the beginning. So when I chose the first single, I had to be, it was after the album was, was made, I had no idea what song to use because when you have an album like this, it's really difficult to find a standout single that would encapsulate the album. Uh, so I had so many songs that are very similar and previously, I've had no problems identifying. I knew Trap Zombies from my first album was going to be my single because it's very commercial and it's a very good like introduction to me in that project. And with Beautiful Nights and Nostalgia, I Won't Help You Find Mascara was very easy to release as a single because of its callbacks to the internet culture and just the fact that it really captures the essence of the new album. With Giallo, it was a little tricky. I had to choose a single that didn't just give away the album, but really keep it a mystery, but still really showed the listener what it's about. And I finally, after months of delay, I discovered it. Knife After Dark. Knife After Dark was the second song that I made on the album. It was kind of a weird, almost accident, the way that it came together. Because my big rule for Vulgar Assassin is I am limiting myself to using an iPad 
for 99% of the creation of my albums. And to me, I feel more liberated when I'm given limitations, uh, especially when it comes to being limited creatively, because it really forces you to think outside the box and come up with solutions to problems that challenge you to do things differently. So I could have easily like gone on the computer and worked on the album and not had any, any issues, but I probably wouldn't have created the kind of music that it would have been now. It probably would have sounded a little bit more commercially produced and I don't think I would have connected to it as much. I like that there are soundtracks that have glitches. I love that there's music that isn't completely, even though it, it uses synthesizers, that it has some heart to it. You can tell that there's passion, that the composer really connects with the film and really gives it their all to make sure that they're representing the film the way it needs to be represented, but also their vision and their, you know, their sound and their style their signature. So even though I'm still developing the sound of Vulgar Assassin, I'm only three albums in and each album has been incredibly different from what has been prior. This I feel like really connected to it. So Knife After Dark was the result and I had to reach out and really turn into a composer, put on the composer hat rather than the producer hat and come at this as if I was scoring a film. So you have the driving synthesizer that comes on. You have the the organ that's just going, you know, and you have the drum machine which is doing its thing, you know, through the do 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 do, 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 do. Such a simple beat that drives the theme. And I like to pull, I pulled some of John Carpenter's music and inspiration into that. So you have the beat that doesn't stop. You have everything else forming around it, forming the story. You're getting the elements of the puzzle pieced together. And Knife After Dark really, really delivers it. Uh, I think it really captures the spirit of, of Giallo without really giving it away. The next song that I'm really proud of having on the album is one that made me step out of my comfort zone, and that is the final showdown, the final act. <laughs> one that I it's a long song but it also is inspired by Fulci, Fabio Frizzi, and Dario Argento. It has a lot of it's stretched out and it's broken up into three different acts. The first act of the song is very melodic, very almost hopeful like you're at the the the, the fake ending of the movie. You have Bethany who has you know, finally conquered the, the, the bad guy and is walking out toward to the sunset, you know, a survivor. And then you have the second act, which is the buildup where you actually realize that no, like the killer didn't die and the killer's getting ready to strike again. And the music starts to really progress. And then you get into the part of the song where I introduce uh, string instrumentation. Uh, I worked with a small little orchestra to get it together and really get to put on the composer hat and really get the sound of the violins, the cellos, and the bass really, really 
lined up and in tune the way that I wanted it to sound, but still enough where the sound is full, but you can still add in more electronic elements. And it was interesting to do because I didn't have access while doing that to a drum machine. I didn't, I wasn't able to bring any synthesizers or anything to get to that session. Uh, and I reworked that song and released it on the album in late July. So I got to do all that finally. Finally, Austin's been proving to be such a, I know a, a smorgasbord of untapped talent or people that are just willing to really help you just for the sake of helping you and getting to believe in something that excites you and really work on that with you. from being mono to stereo to full on like surround. It is mastered. The album is mastered in Dolby Atmos. So I wanted full control of every sound placement everywhere. But this song specifically starts very mono. It starts basically all coming out of one speaker, one sound. And as each act goes, the song grows in sonic scope till it becomes this massive, pulsating, chaotic mess that has electronic guitars going off, the strings going off, the vocals going off, and the synthesizer and the drum machine just going. And you have no idea what is happening. It's just it's insane madness. So that is what the final act, the final showdown is just absolutely living in Austin. There are a lot of films from this area. You're just, if you're a horror fan, you're just surrounded by horror history. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you have the uh, Planet Terror, Death Proof. Um, you have so much films also like shot in the area, which are Linklater's films mostly take place here in Austin. Um, you just have, yeah, Robert Rodriguez, who's constantly running down the street filming films here. And you have, you know, a lot of other people. And it's really inspiring to know that it has such a vibrant history in film without having necessarily be in Los Angeles or California to experience it. And now that I'm doing Giallo and having it associate with film again, it kind of feels like I'm reconnecting into that. I feel like I need to do a project like this so I can be able to get into the filmmaking spirit again. And I'm also very happy to have discovered Vulgar Assassin and the capabilities of this of this project uh, during the snowpocalypse and during COVID. It really, really made me just really like embrace and fall in love with music again. Uh, of making it, I've always been, I'm your typical Aquarius. I love music. I have to have it in my life 24 seven and quiet spaces just freak me out. So having the ability to take a break from making the commercial music that you're used to and really getting to flex that experimental muscle and finally do the music that I've always wanted to do. 
And yes, I still get to go back and work on my and my Ricardo Gonzalez projects and and films. The Vulgar Assassin has really, really satisfied me in a way that I haven't felt in a long time. And part of it is every every penny that I put into Vulgar Assassin and every song that I make and release, it's all me. I am making sure that if I want to make money off of it, I have to be putting out some good work. So that is all on me. And that is something that I see as a challenge and I love it. I love every bit of it. I love how the music culture here has accepted it and how fun it is being Vulgar Assassin in a way that I can't explain. And being able to combine it with the elements of cinema and bringing in those elements that made me fall in love with art in this way. Um, it's making me fall in love with it again. And I am super excited. I think of all the albums that I've made, and I know Giallo was, was supposed to be released on my birthday in February and has been just getting delayed just over and over and to the point where I almost gave up on it. Absolutely almost gave up on it. I saw it through and said, this is something I have to make. This has to be released. It is too good that I, I think that for it to not be. So I'm looking forward to taking Giallo to the next level to have you guys experience it, listen to it, and possibly be inspired to make something out of it and run with it. And I'd love to one day, it'd be cool it to see it, you know, if you go to like the Alamo Draft House or if you go to like an AMC theater and you're sitting down, getting ready to watch your horror movie, and then you see it. Giallo.